So by popular demand, starting this week, we're going to put together some screencasts to help you get started with each activity. This week's activity is really, really important. It's also super fun. We're going to help you put up your own personal website, and we're going to help you getting, get started using a tool called Git, which is a really, really important and commonly used tool that people use to collaboratively develop software and share it with others. Okay, so um, there's lots to read here. The one thing I do want to point out is that if you're a computer scientist or computer engineer, you need a personal website. If I was going to hire you in three or four years, I wouldn't even consider anyone without a personal website. A LinkedIn page, a Facebook page, a GitHub profile, these are not sufficient. You need a personal website. It proves that you know how to use the internet. It proves that you can use do basic things like the assignment that we're about to do. And it's a great way to sort of express yourself and it's a great way to, to, to show that you can do some design and other things. So it really brings together a lot of the skills and abilities that people are looking for when they hire computer scientists and computer engineers. So you need one. But we're gonna get you started. And then for the next you know four years of your life, you can actually um, you know update this and for the rest of your life, but certainly while you're in school, uh, you can update this and improve it over time. Okay, the other part of the web uh, activity that's pretty important is we're going to introduce you to Git. Uh, Git is the one of the most popular, if not the most popular tool that people use to work on software together. And there are great, there's great support for Git, including an online service called GitHub that allows you to host repositories, uh, share code with others, and collaborate on projects. So the first part of this is creating a GitHub account. I'm going to skip over that. I already have one. The next part of this is, is using a feature of Git that's really exciting called GitHub Pages. GitHub Pages allows you to publish a website on GitHub for free. So there's no cost. You can make changes wherever and whenever you want to. And GitHub will host those pages and serve them to the world. And this is a great way to host static websites. Um, you don't need a, you know, uh, it's free. You don't need your own server sitting somewhere. And it, it works pretty well. So let's uh, walk through the first part of getting that started. A lot of that comes from a tutorial right here uh, that GitHub has put up uh, that is quite simple. So the first thing I need to do is create a repository with a very specific name. So this is my GitHub account, gchallen. I'm going to create a repository called gchallen.github.io. The repository has to have that name. That's be username.github.io or nothing else will work. So this is my new website. And I'm going to make that public because I'm not that worried about this. Anybody can see my website anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So now I'm done with creating the, web, the repository. The next thing I need to do, if I go over here to the uh, uh, instructions, is I need to clone the repository. So this is a command that you're going to run on your local machine. If you don't have Git installed, I do. I'm using a Mac. I would use our virtual appliance to do this part of the assignment. Don't waste time trying to install it on Windows if you don't already have it. OK, so I can literally cut and paste this command into my terminal and oh, sorry I don't want to do quite that I want to use this link so I'm going to modify this command a little bit um, I don't remember okay so it says you appear to have cloned an empty repository okay that's nice um, what happened so git took the repository from github and it created a copy for me the copy is in this directory and as Git pointed out, when it cloned this repository, the repository is empty right now. So if I run ls, there's no files in there. One thing I want to point out is that there is a hidden directory in every Git repository at the very top. It's called, got, it's called .git. That's where Git stores the changes to the repository, old copies of things, and all of the information it needs to work. So do not rename or delete or another way, any other way, sort of uh, munge any of the contents of this directory or Git will stop working properly. All right, so I can continue with my... Um, with a very simple tutorial here on GitHub. The next thing to do, so I've already changed into this directory, I've done that. Now I'm going to uh, create an index.html file for my new website. And I'm gonna write some contents into it. Those contents are just hello world. So what this command does is it takes the string hello world and it redirects it to the file index.html. So once I run this command, what I'll see is that I have a new file in this directory uh, called index.html, it was just created. And if I look at the contents of that file, now the assignment is going to encourage you to, to use a text editor called Atom, and I very much encourage you to, to start with a more modern text editor like Atom. I'm an old fogey, and so I still use something called Vim, which is pretty old, but somewhat workable. Um, this allows me to edit the file. So let's look at what's in the file. All that's in the file is the string hello world. That's what I would expect. Okay, I'm in good shape. Um, now, when I'm done, my GitHub repository is going to be over here at that particular URL. 
and there shouldn't be any contents right there. Uh, there are right now because I just did this uh, a minute ago and I'm redoing the example. So that's old stuff. Um, let's walk through the rest of the process of, of getting this online. The first thing I have to do whenever I create a new file in the Git repository is I have to tell Git about it. So there's a really interesting and, and useful and important Git command that's called Git status. So if I run Git status on a Git website, in a Git repository, sorry, it'll tell me information about the repository. It doesn't change anything, it just is informational. So what this tells me is there's a file in here that Git doesn't know about yet. And it tells me exactly what to do if I want to include this in what will be committed. So the commits are how I tell Git about files I want to save. So in this case, you'll see that there's this index.html file that's not tracked yet. And if I want to add it, I can do git add file name. So I could do git add index.html. I can also follow the tutorial here and I can just do git add dash dash all. So this does kind of what you might think. It adds all the files in the repository that Git doesn't know about yet. When I'm done, I can see that I have a change to be committed. I have a new file, which is called index.html. And the next step here is to commit that file. So when you commit files in Git, what you're telling it is, I always want you to have a copy of that file around in this exact state. So it's sort of like saving a file, except that the saves never overwrite any previous information. So Git will store a copy of this file in this state forever. And this is really useful when you're developing software because you might make mistakes. So you might want to back up to an older version of the file. You might want to compare two versions of the file to see what changed. Your partner, or you're working on assignment with someone and they changed some code. You want to see what the differences are. Um, so this is a really, really uh, powerful primitive. When I commit files, Git also allows me to attach a little bit of metadata, message in this case, to the commit. So in this case, I'm committing um, index.html, that's the only file in the directory, and the message is initial commit. So I'm just uh, writing down something about this commit, which is that the, it was the first commit I made on my website. And I could write that too, my first website commit. Okay, so I'm done. And now you'll see that the, the commit says that there was one file change, that was index.html, and there was one line that was inserted. So now if I run git status, it would show me that everything's okay. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the contents to my git repository. So if I go over here, you'll notice that here, the, there's a file in the git repository, but if I refresh this page on GitHub, it's still showing me that there's, this is the page that you see on GitHub when the repository is empty. So there's nothing here yet. Um, so this is, this is pretty cool. Um, but I need to get my changes to GitHub, right? So GitHub doesn't know about this new file, I need to tell it. So I'm gonna run this last command from the tutorial, git push dash u origin master. Let this work. Now when this is done, what you'll see is if I go back over here and refresh the page, it looks different. And what it shows is that there's a file in my repository, it'll show me the contents, and it'll say, uh, it shows me the commit, right? So the last commit was just a minute ago, and it shows me that message that I wrote. So GitHub has a great user interface for browsing information about repositories. Um, what happened was I told Git to share my changes or synchronize my changes with, in this case, origin, which is where the changes came from, and master is the name of the branch that I'm on. And sort of ignore masters for the purpose of this, uh, branches for the purpose of this example. Okay, so now because of the name I gave this repository, if I go over here to gchallenge.github.io, I see hello world. So that's the context of the next on HTML. Now just to, uh, let me sh walk you quickly through the flow of how you would use Git to update your website. So here's what I do. First I make some changes. Hello, another world. So I'm gonna change the text. I'm gonna save that. Now what's interesting is if I run Git status, what you'll see is that Git knows that there's a modified file in my directory. So this is the nice thing about Git. It'll also help you keep track of the changes that you've made. So I'm gonna commit that file. In this case, I'm using a shorthand for the commit. So this does both an add and a commit in one step. Um, and I'm gonna call this small change, right? So now if I run git status, I see that this file has changed, but if I go over here, if I go to my website, I don't see the changes yet. But why not? The reason is because I haven't pushed my changes to GitHub. So I need to do a git push. And once I've done that first git push with those extra arguments, I don't need to do that again. So in this case, you can see that use git push to publish my local commits. I'm gonna do that. Now when I go over here, I see hello another world, and I see my new message, small change. And when I go to my website, hopefully in a second, you'll see that the contents have been updated. So this is the basic git workflow. Edit the page. Um, 
run git status to see what's changed, make some commits, run git status again, push to my remote, and repeat. And I can do this over and over again to get the website into the state that I want. So please have fun with this activity. It should be a great time. The UTAs will be uh, there to help you. Um, and hopefully by the end of Wednesday, you'll have the beginnings of what will become a very nice personal website for you to use.